good morning. Good morning. We are live and live this morning, so uh, it's great to see all your smiling faces. Uh, it's, it's an awesome time, isn't it, to be able to be together in the Lord, you know? Come on. Now, you all wanted to come back, and now you're not even smiling and hooping and hollering. You should be like, whoo, yeah, that's right, Keith. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, welcome this morning. Uh, we've got a, a great uh, lineup for you this morning, and uh, we even have uh, Emily on the piano this morning. You might not be able to see her, but... Yeah, she's smiling behind the mask. She's, uh, she's here for the day. She'll be going back to the, the kids this afternoon, but uh, uh, I'm glad that she was able to stop by today. So, uh, With that, this morning, would you, would you join me in prayer as we, as we open up this morning? Heavenly Father, we do thank you again this morning just for an opportunity to, to gather in your house. Uh, Lord, we just, we just give you praise for this opportunity. Uh, we know that, uh, that you are in control. And Father, I pray this morning that everything that we say and do will bring glory to you, uh, that you will be uh, blessed by our worship. Uh, it, it is about you this morning and not about anybody else, and so we just thank you for that. And Father, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, this morning, uh, if you, um, there's several out there that are, that are watching while we're in here, they're watching on Facebook. And uh, if, if you're in here, I'd encourage you to go ahead and, and to, uh, to share what we're doing this morning on your page so it, so it goes uh, to your friends and, and to uh, uh, family. And uh, they're on there saying uh, good morning. Actually, Joe and Donna are driving this morning, and they're saying hello to you. Uh, they're out of town today. Um, and so we have several that are watching on, on Facebook this morning. So... Uh, greetings to all of you, and then greetings to all of you that are here this morning. And so we're going to begin with a song this morning, Where Could I Go? So if you'll stand and join us.
Jessica. And we're going to sing the chorus one more time. Uh, you know, last week when we worshiped together, uh, Lisa Martinez, uh, they're back and, and up in Washington State, and uh, she said that was the first time that she had heard and been a part of corporate worship uh, since in, in March. And so they were they're super excited uh, to be able to be a part on on Facebook. And so so what I want you to do is just sing this chorus and I. If you don't, don't know the song, we already got through it, so you can figure it out now, right? <laughs> and so sing it uh, loud so they can hear you on Facebook, because a lot of people still aren't here. You know, we have we have Tanya and Scott and, and, and uh, Cora and uh, Debbie Katie, and, and so a lot of them are still at home watching right now. And so they want to hear you uh, be excited about being in here where they're not yet. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. Harvesters now. 
Uh, they are going to start coming once a month to do a di distribution at the Lighthouse. Uh, we're working on a day for that, so that is a real blessing. Uh, we're also able to buy uh, food uh, through them at like a super reduced cost, so it's really going to help us in, in purchasing things. And it will also work for free food for Friday, she said, or free food first Friday. And so, yeah, that's a neat thing that those things will open up, uh, you know, later on this summer or whatever. But uh, um, she thought that was a great deal that what we were doing. And so anyway, uh, that's a real blessing. That's a real praise. Uh, so I, I shared that with you at this time. Um, prayer concerns, uh, continue to pray for uh, Irma Fritz. Um, uh, we really have a, uh, a continued prayer, but a praise to have Linda Fletcher here today. Because last Sunday at this time, yes, uh, she was in recovery uh, from having her gallbladder right, uh, taken out. And so... Uh, continue to pray for both her and, and Charles as they uh, maneuver through this new world, right? And uh, so it's a blessing to see you guys here today. Uh, God really provided a great way there. Um, uh, and Miss Autumn, if you didn't see when she was here, she came in on crutches this morning. Uh, she did some taekwondo off of the, uh, is that what it was? Or jiu-jitsu <laughs> off of the trampoline. Not really, it was just an accidental and uh, uh, broke a bone in her leg that they're working uh, to see how that's going to go over. So pray for her. Uh, probably not the best thing she wanted to see in the summer, uh, so that would be the biggest thing. So uh, pray for her as well. Uh, we have several on the prayer list. You know, like I said, we have uh, uh, several who, who are not here uh, that would really like to be. Uh, continue to remember them. Um, um, uh, Will the Elder uh, really came out pretty well with his procedure. Uh, continue to pray for him as he recovers, as well as with uh, uh, Linda. Uh, Dennis Eads and Teresa, they're not here just because of all that's going on. And, and Dennis has a, quite a uh, history of health concerns and stuff that we, we really want to lift uh, Dennis up. Uh, and he lift up Bob Dunn and, and Vera, uh, uh, Cora's brother and sister, with their health concerns. And Darlene, uh, Jerry Harrell. Um, uh, Rex Bauer, um, uh, Leona Montgomery, as she continues to heal from her foot surgery, and like I mentioned earlier, Donna and Joe were traveling today. She said hi, but we pray for uh, travel safeties for them as, as they go and return, and, and uh, continue to pray for uh, Noe and Lisa Martinez. Um, I got some uh, news on my dad this week. He's not doing as well, kind of struggling, and so they're going to have to uh, do some things to, uh, to medicate him, and that's going to be difficult because... Uh, that'll stop phone calls that we're able to make uh, because he won't be able to uh, comprehend as much. And my brother is still not able to get in to see him. Uh, they were one of the first uh, facilities to lock down, and they told him this week they'll be the one of the last facilities to open back up as well. So uh, he won't be getting in there anytime soon. So uh, if you pray for Charles, that would be that would be great. We'd appreciate that. And. Uh, with that this morning, uh, I know there's several others, but if you would uh, join me in, in prayer, uh, we'll go to the Lord. You know, again, Lord, we thank you this morning for just an opportunity to, to gather in your house. And, you know, we don't uh, know how special that really is until uh, those things are kind of taken away and, and we've seen this pandemic come through. And Father, even in our own uh, county, we've seen an uh, increase in numbers as well. And so we ask for uh, safety for those that are even here today, and safety for those within our community, and, and Father, we, we pray for a healing upon this, and we know that you're fully capable of that. And so this morning, we just ask for your uh, blessings upon that. We pray for our president, vice president, Father, we pray for the, the leaders of our country, we pray for the leaders of our state, uh, our, our county, our local officials, and Father, I know for many of them, this is um, uh, uh, something that has never taken place in, in their lifetimes either, and so they're trying to maneuver through some waters that they've never been through and trying to do the best that they can do. And so, Father, we just ask that you would uh, minister to each one uh, in, in a special way, that, that your grace would be sufficient for the decisions that they make. And, Father, even through this, that you would use this situation to draw them unto you, Father, that they would make uh, true and wise and godly decisions. And, Father, as we face an upcoming election, we pray that we, too, will be uh, diligent in, in, in voting for those that... Uh, uh, really have our best interest at hand. And so we give those things to you uh, today. Uh, Father, we pray for our, our country and the, the chaos that it's in, not only because of the uh, uh, COVID-19, but Father, just because of the uh, the rioting, the, uh, the displacement, uh, Father, the uh, 
the injustice that takes place, but uh, Father, that uh, really is no excuse for the things that, that go on. And so, Father, we pray for uh, lives, we pray for hearts, we pray for uh, your ministry through the Holy Spirit would just sweep through our nation, Father, that it would uh, uh, bring one of reconciliation as we spoke of recently uh, to you first and foremost. And Father, if our hearts are in tune with you, it makes a whole lot of difference in the way we relate and react to one another. And so, Father, we pray for the hearts not only of those that are uh, in this room today, uh, not only of those that are listening, uh, whether it be today or in the future on this uh, Facebook Live, but Father, for those within our community, those within our state, those within our nation, and Father, that you would minister in a mighty way. And then again this morning, we, we thank you for uh, answered prayer. We see that uh, so many times, even seeing Emily here today, uh, Linda Fletcher, uh, uh, so many other uh, faces that we see this morning, Father, and uh, we know that your hand has been in and amongst our lives, and we're so thankful for that. Uh, we do lift up those like... Like Autumn this morning, as she struggles with the new thing that has uh, taken place within her body. And Father, we pray for a healing upon her. And that, Father, she'll be able to, to look and to see how you provide it. This will be a, a testimony for her in, in days and years to come. Uh, Father, we pray for those that are that are listening this morning. And think of uh, uh, Scott and Tanya as they, as they struggle with different things uh, individually with health. And, and we know that your hand is upon them as well and that you would continue to uh, bless them. Father, I think it did indeed this morning as the health concerns uh, that he has and he faces. And Father, that you would just put a hedge of protection around him and, and uh, just touch and provide a healing for him as well. And I think of those like Cora, like um, um, Irma, that uh, uh, Jerry, that uh, Rex, uh, Father, many others that are just uh, unable to come at this time. And so we ask for your uh, protection against them, but we also ask for encouragement and strength. Uh, in their lives and in their bodies. And, and Father, I pray for uh, uh, Leota as she continues to recover. Uh, Father, I pray for uh, Willie Elder and Linda as they have a different set of circumstances for both of them as well. But Father, we know that you are the great physician. Uh, we saw you provide through Willie's life, and we just ask that that be a testimony to them in a mighty way. And the Lord, this morning, we are so grateful uh, to be able to be right where we are today, uh, right here uh, in your house, uh, worshiping you. Father, we thank you for the, the grace that you bestow upon each one of us. Uh, we thank you for the way you provide. And Father, we're thankful for the way you love us. And so this morning, we just uh, ask that everything that we say and do would be in honor and glory of you. Mm -hmm. Father, we just give you the praise for this day. Uh, we ask that you hear our prayers, hear our cries, and Father, in the midst of that, that you would respond accordingly in each life, and we'd be able to see that. And so, Father, we lift us up in the body, uh, that you would strengthen us through this time, and that we would see uh, your provision in, in just uh, numerous ways. And so, Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, stand this morning. We're going to stay near my God to thee.
ahead and be seated this morning. Uh, we're going to be in, in Judges chapter 6. Judges, or Shelley, not Judges. The mother of Judges. How about that? And uh, we're going to talk about Gideon this morning. And really, we're going to talk about Gideon in a, in a different way. Uh, most of the time, we think of Gideon and uh, his, uh, his battle. Uh, you know, he started out with, with many men, and they ended up down to just, uh, uh, just a few. And then they, they were able to win in that battle. But uh, uh, this morning, we're going to look at, at kind of the man Gideon and, and really early on in his, his life. And so uh, we're going to be in Judges chapter 13. Again, there's not a Bible in your pew unless you brought one or in your chair, but I hope you I hope you did bring one. And for those of you that are living online, it's time to grab your Bible, grab your pen, uh, refill your coffee. So you guys can't run and do that. Uh, but they can run home and, and or run in the kitchen and refill their coffee and get ready to get, get going this morning. And so we're going to talk about Gideon. And so we're going to be in Judges chapter 6, verse 13, if you would join me in, in the reading of God's Word. So pardon me, Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to us? For all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. And so would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for these uh, Great stories that are within the Bible, and Father, it's a it's a reality of things that took place, but it's a reality in our lives today that we can look back and reflect on, and to see how you provided, and to know how you will provide today. Praise for this day. We thank you for the living Word that we that we have, that we know, that we love, which is which is Jesus Christ, and Father, for the for the work upon the cross, and the Father, for, for raising him from the dead, and, and just showing proof to us in our lives today. And Father, we also thank you for the written word, uh, the opportunity to uh, look at what you have to say to each one of us individually. And Father, I pray this morning that you take the words off of this page, of all of our pages, and apply them to our minds and apply them to our hearts and help us to see and to be who you want us to be and help us to understand what you want in each one of our lives as well. And so, Lord, again, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to, to gather here today. You know, it's a, uh, you know, I, I confess, uh, even in my own life, I think I really take that for granted when we uh, come in on Sunday mornings and, and just see faces and shake hands and hug and just the things that we, we do, and then we go about our own merry way, and then we, uh, when those things are kind of uh, taken from us, we realize how important those things really are. As far as this morning, I just pray that you would open up to our minds and our hearts what, what really is important. What really makes the difference and how we can make a difference with our lives as well. So, we're Lord, we're giving you praise for what you're going to do right here in our midst today. I just pray that our hearts are uh, in tune to you, that we would shut out the outside world, that we would uh, listen and be intent to your voice to us. And Father, we just give you praise for what you're going to do. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. On the last week, we, we talked about the return. It was about uh, the return of the uh, uh, Judah had been captured by uh, Babylon, and they were exiled for 70 years, and and reason because they just continued to uh, uh, disobey God. Uh, they continued to, to sin and uh, uh, really just lived a, a, a flip of life in a, in a way that uh, they really didn't care what God said or what God did. They were going to live who they were and, and do the things they did. And, and they did. And so they ended up in, in captivity uh, to Babylon because of their, their choices uh, against God. Because sin, no matter how you look at it, is sin. And sin is against God. And, and it doesn't matter whether we uh, try to justify it today or we try to redefine what the Bible says. God has already said it. 
And, and what he says is, is if it's sin, uh, it, it's sin for us today. Uh, it, it, it didn't change. And so God used Babylon then as an agent of judgment against Israel for their idolatry and for their rebellion against him. And so about 600 years before that, in uh, uh, the late 1100s or, or, uh, B.C., uh, we find that the same thing had taken place in a smaller area. Uh, over and over and over, the Israelites would just fall away from God. They would just sin. They would just live their own lives and how they wanted to live, and they would do the things that they wanted to do. And, and, and then uh, as, as they fell away from God, God would send judgment in, and then the judgment a lot of times, like with Babylon, would require them being overruled by another people until they realized what was going on, and then they would cry out to God, and God would hear their cries. And as he heard them cry, then he would, he would release them from the bondage, and yes, for a few years they would be really good because they would understand who God is and what God had done, and, and then before long it would be back to the same old life, the same old way. And so we really kind of relate to this today, I believe, because uh, we just kind of lived in a way that was just uh, how we did it. And we all kind of lived our own little lives, and we would come together on Sundays, and, and we would worship the Lord, but it really wasn't about worshiping the Lord. It was about more about coming together and, and just being a part of something. And, I, and not just at North, but I really mean uh, in, in the church in America, I really feel that that was the case. And so then because of this pandemic that had come across, uh, we were unable to, to meet together. We, we did Facebook Live. We did different things and, and, and are still doing that. But uh, it should change the way we think. Not just about technology and being able to use that, but about a relationship with the Lord and where are we? Where are we today? And so in, in Judges chapter 6, verse 1, in, in the beginning of, of Judges chapter 6 there, it says that uh, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. And so they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And that's just a repeated theme for the Israelites. But unfortunately, uh, we are no different, and it really didn't change as we went forward, doing evil in the sight of the Lord. And then he would give them into the hands of the Midianites. So, so yes, it's a reoccurring theme for the children of God. And at this point, we see that he used the Midianites then as his instrument of judgment against Israel for their sins against God. Now, sin might be, we might sin against our brothers, we might sin against our sister, but ultimately, sin is against God. And God has laid out a perfect way for us to, to live and to follow him, but yet so many times we choose to go and do our own way. We like to be our own people, if you will. And so some of you might be asking this morning, or maybe all of you might be asking the very same question, at least at some point here, the way it comes about in Judges chapter 6. And so if you look back at verse 13, you can almost see uh, Gideon saying, um, uh, Lord, um, uh, pardon me this morning, but uh, uh, if the Lord is with us, why is all this happening? Why, why did the pandemic come? Why, why do we have to stay home? Why do we not work? Why can't we travel? Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? When he said, did not the Lord bring us up out of, should be our, sin, on the screen there, just in the R. And so he said, Lord, if you're so good and you love us so much, why has all of this happened to us? But if you look in Scripture, you see that it's a complete reoccurring theme over and over and over because it's not about why has this happened to us. It's because most of the time we have brought it on ourselves. We have distanced ourselves from God. We chose not to follow his will and his way. And all of this 
didn't just happen. It, it, it wasn't the Lord's fault that all of this happened. Because most, if not all, is brought on by our own doing. Or, or you could say our lack of doing. Now, Wednesday night we talked about um, how and why we serve the Lord, why we do the things that we do once we're saved. And so works has nothing to do with the process of salvation. That's by faith alone. But we work because of our salvation. We serve out of our hearts, not to be seen by man, but to serve the Lord because of what he's done for us. That he would give his life as an atonement for our sin in our place, even though we didn't deserve it, and he would go and he would accept death for us so that we don't have to face death in the way that we would without him. And just like the Israelites who needed a Savior, they did evil in the sight of the Lord, we need someone to save us from our sin as well. And so each person in the Bible it is really a type of Christ. Uh, and if you see Gideon, and Gideon comes in, he's going to be a judge, he's going to uh, help in the process of, of, of leading the people and, and being a redeeming judge that, that guides and directs them. Uh, each one is just a small part of who Jesus is who came in the fulfillment of all of these people. And so Gideon's account is it's really recorded in, <coughs> excuse me, in chapter 6 through 8. And when, when Gideon comes on the scene here, they are, uh, the Israelites are overrun by the Midianites. Uh, but it was a consequence of their disobedience to God. That's why they were where they were at. And so for seven years, they faced invasions by the, uh, the Midianites, the Amalekites, uh, uh, foreigners from the east. And so they just continued to just be, be battered uh, by the enemy. And they got to the point here where they, they couldn't realize why all of this was happening. Why is this all happening? And so that's where we find ourselves in the scripture this morning. Israelites had sinned. And even though they didn't know what the problems that they were facing were self-inflicted. And it was self-inflicted because of their sin against God. And God responds, and they, they cried out, and God responds by sending them this prophet, this judge, named Gideon. And he was sending him to help them understand who the one true God really is. How he had provided for them in the past and how that meant he would continue to provide for them when they were focused on him and not on themselves. And it's repeated how quickly they would uh, forget him. It was a continuous cycle. They would, they would love the Lord. They would follow him. They would fall away. They would live deep in sin. They would cry out and God would send somebody to redeem them. And they would live for a while, and they would love the Lord, and then they would start to live for themselves, and they would follow and stand, and then they would cry out. And so it was just a continual process over and over and over, and so uh, it hasn't changed in all those years. That's still the way it works in our lives today. We get to the point where we finally realize, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what, what I need to do. And he's saying, all you have to do is cry out to me. I'm the one that can make a difference in this. I can, I can change your life. I can transform you. But you have to be willing to let me do that. And so really, this is, uh, we get to that verses 8 through 10, and he really says, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians. And I delivered you from the hand of your oppressors. And I drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I 
and the Lord your God. Do not, and not in consideration here, he says, do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. But God said, you have not listened to me. He said, look what I did. I brought you out of Egypt. You couldn't do that by yourself. You were, you were living in bondage. You were living in slavery to the Egyptians. And, and things had gotten worse to where <coughs> you were getting uh, beaten as well. You used to have that assembly. The thing would come to where you could make the bricks, and, and then you had to go get those things to make the bricks yourself. Sounds familiar, right? In the workplace, right? You can just have this guy do all of that work. I thought that's what the Egyptians done. And he said, I delivered you from that. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians, something that you could not do on your own. I delivered you from the hand of all of your oppressors, all that have come upon you. I, I've taken that. And God said, not only did I do that, I gave you their land. I took the land from them, and I gave it to you. So not only did I deliver you, not only did I rescue you, I provided for you. And he said, really, all I wanted you to do was not worship the gods of the people. All I wanted was you to worship me. But God said, you you didn't listen. And so that brings us to our thoughts today. Why do we do the things that we do? And I thought about that this week, and I really thought, you know, I believe that we do the things that we do because we get to the point where we forget what God has done. We forget what God is capable of and sometimes we get to the point in our lives where we really just don't believe that God can do that. You know, he, he might do it for somebody else, but I just don't know that he can or would do it for me. And I thought, well, that first song we went, where can I go but to the Lord? But we just get to the point where we don't. And so that brings us to our guy today, Mr. Gideon. And Gideon had earned the name towards the end of this, we're going to see, as, as, as Jeroboam. After he destroyed his family's altar to Baal. In Judges chapter 6, verse 32. So Gideon broke down Baal's altar, or because of Gideon broke down Baal's altar, they gave him the name Jeroboam that day saying, let Baal contend with him. And as I read that this week, I really thought, you know, sometimes it just takes one man or woman standing up and saying, hey, this isn't right. What we're doing is, is not right. We're, we're going against God. And so Gideon, he looked and, and he saw his family and what were they doing? But, but they were worshiping the gods of the lands and they had all this idolatry going on and, and not only did they have it and not only were they doing it, it was, it was out their house and, and they were just worshiping the God of Baal right there. And Gideon thought, how in the world did we, did we get to this point? How did we get to this place? And so in, in Gideon's time, uh, Israel was, was full of idolatry. It was like a pandemic. Sin it, it, is contagious. And it was a sickness, it was a, a disease that, that needed healing. And because they were so deep in this disease, the Lord gave them over to the hands of the Midianites. And so he's asking, why is all of this happening? And really, it was to help them understand where they were. And I fully believe all the way through this thing that we've faced today, a lot of it contends with our own hearts and our own lives today. And really, 
the Lord has got to have with you. Where are his children? Where are his people? And so throughout scripture, for the, for the Lord to heal, he brings an awareness of our hearts and how bad the situation really is. And if you look across our country today, you can see how bad the situation really is. We're a mess. I used to think it was just me. And now I'm glad to see it's everybody. See, we need to understand why we're where we are. And we need to understand why we're where we are before we can ever move forward, before God can ever heal us, before God can ever transform us into what he wants us to be, especially when this disease that is so encompassed us is sin. And it's sin against God who, who lays out the things and the ways that we should be. When Israel cried out to God for help, first he sent them into the hand of the oppressor. And then he sent them a prophet to remind them about what God had done in the past. And so that's the importance of, of journaling. That's the importance of writing things down because then you can look back and see a day and you can see a time of when God did this and when God did that. And that's what we need to see as individuals so that it brings us to the point, it brings us to mind. And so, you know, as we started this year, you know, John 2020 was to be about seeing the Lord and everything that we do and then, and then being glad and being joyful. And before we knew it, we were secluded to home. And we were all so joyful, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's sarcasm. <laughs> no, we were not. And we're thinking, where is the Lord in this? Well, he's right there. Do we really appreciate the things that we have? Do we really appreciate the things that we do? Do we really love the Lord with all our heart and mind and soul and strength? Or do we love him when it's convenient to us? See, Israel had, had disobeyed God and they were just deep in idolatry and sin has flourished. They were in the middle of, of Baal and Ashrock worship. They, they worshiped the gods of the people of the land at that time. And then we see in, in Judges chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, Right in kind of the midst of this set of scriptures, the angel of the Lord came and sat down in the oak at Oprah that belonged to Joash, the Azurite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep him, or to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you. Mighty warrior. And so this is one of those scriptures that we often overlook. We just go right on by because we're, we're reading the story. And so we need to stop and pause here for a moment because this is huge in the whole thing. God sent the angel of the Lord to Gideon. And so the exact identity of the angel of the Lord isn't given, but, but there's clues throughout scripture. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, there's references to this angel of the Lord. A specific, unique being, separate from all the other angels. The angel of the Lord speaks as God, identifies with God, and exercises the responsibilities of God. And the appearances of the angel of the Lord cease at the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Even though angels are mentioned numerous times in the New Testament, the angel of the Lord is never mentioned after the birth of Christ. But we know that Jesus said that he existed before Abraham. 
So it's logical that he could manifest himself at that time to earth at specific times. And so throughout scripture, we see that it very well could have been him at that point. And so the angel of the Lord said unto the tree, watching Gideon thresh the wheat in the winepress to keep it from the Midianites. And so the angel of the Lord, he, he speaks to Gideon and he says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you. And so Gideon's reply is really kind of a lack of faith. Okay, if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened? And that's the first question that not only Gideon asked, that's the first question that we ask all the time. When something happens in our life, whether it be health, whether it be financial, whether it be emotional, whether it be, whether it be, whether it be, whether it be, whatever it is, you can fill in the blank. The first thing we ask is, why is this happening to me? Why? Lord, I love you. Why is this happening to me? If God is really with me, then, then how could this happen to me? Shouldn't, if, if I believe in Jesus Christ and, and I'm a believer, shouldn't my life be perfect? <laughs> See, you all know the answer to that, right? That's not the way it works. Perfect is reserved for heaven. It's reserved for, for glory. But we live in a fallen world that's full of sin. And the prophet Jeremiah, this is one time we're going to turn out of judgment, but Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Now you might have heart problems and need a pacemaker, right? Sharon had to have one recently. Jim had to have one recently. You might have to have open heart surgery. They can do lots of things. They can put in valves. They can, they can repair muscles. They can do all kinds of things. But the heart that we're talking about here is not that same physical heart. It's a spiritual heart. And that spiritual heart that we all have is deceitful because we inherited from our great, 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 great grandparents. All you genealogists know, we have to go back to Adam and Eve. And because of their sin, we have a heart full of sin. And it's deceitful and it's beyond cure except if we accept Jesus. And it's kind of deep the way Jeremiah closes that out. He said, who can understand it? And you look across the world today, America, and you almost want to say that. Who can understand this mess? How, how can we be like this? It's because of our heart. Our heart has got us right where we are. And so, here, here's the big thing for you. If you're writing, if you're taking notes at home or wherever you're at, this is the big, the key to everything today. When something happens to you, like when you jump off the trampoline and break your leg, right? Don't say, why is this happening to me? Say, what is the Lord trying to show me through this? And sometimes that's difficult. Because sometimes we are really struggling with something. Sometimes there are things in our lives that are far beyond our control, far beyond our compare. And yet the last thing we want to know is what the Lord is doing. We just want to get out of where we are at this point. But in the midst of that, really, instead of saying, why is this happening to me? Just stop and pause and say, Lord, what are you trying to show me through it? And he may not answer right today, he may not answer right now, but he will answer that question. And so that is the question that Gideon didn't answer that we should. What are you trying to show me? And so the problem was at that point, and the problem is a lot of times in our lives, is that Israel was in complete defiance with God and living in sin. They were not only living in sin, they set up idols at their own homes and were worshiping them. And then they said, oh, why is this happening to me? 
I'm, I'm a good guy. You know, compared to my neighbor, I'm a really good guy. Right? But, but that wasn't it. They were so deep in sin that they couldn't even see it. They couldn't even see that what they were doing was sin because now it had been washed over and it, it wasn't even sin anymore. And the Midianites had control over them because of their actions. And so now the Lord calls Gideon to save Israel out of Midian's hand. And so the angel, he, the Lord kind of confirms God's word. He took Gideon a, a miracle in the midst of that. And he gave Gideon a promise in verse 16. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to look at that. Multiple times throughout scriptures we see this too. I will be with you. Through your troubles, through your torment, through your pain. And instead of saying, why is this happening to me? Ask the Lord, what are you showing me in this situation? Because he is going to be with you. Amen? Amen? And that's what we need to know. Far beyond all those things, we need to know that God is going to be with us. And so that night, after meeting with the angel of the Lord and, the, and saying, I'm going to be with you, Gideon was ready to move forward. He wasn't sure what that looked like, but he was ready to go. And so it wasn't long then, that night, that, that Gideon and, and ten of his servants tore down Baal's altar at his family's property. He cut down the Asherah pole that was next to it. And then they built an altar to God and, and the wood from the Ashrock pole and all of it he put on top and they burned it and they sacrificed it to the Lord. And Gideon said, no more of this for my family. I'm, I'm done with this. Whether they're done with it or not, we're putting a stop to it right here. And he made a spectacle out of it by, by burning it right there in their property. And the next morning, the, the townspeople, they discovered that Gideon had tore down this altar to Baal, and it infuriated them. I cannot believe you tore down that altar. What are you doing? Gideon had disrespected their things. Their things of worship. They're things that had become idols in their lives at that time. And the men came to, to Joash, to Gideon's father, and said, uh, bring out that boy because he's going to have to die. He broke down Baal's altar, and he, he cut down the Israel pole, and he, he burned it all to the altar to God. And Joash really responded in a great way. He said, if Baal is really God... Then couldn't Bell save himself? He, he couldn't. And, and if Gideon needs to be punished, why don't we let Baal do it? If Baal is really a god, which he's not, then let Baal do it. And so after that, then Gideon was called Jeroboam. Let Baal contend with him. Because he broke down the altar of God. And so, so Gideon not only defeated Baal, but also the Midianite rule over the people at that time. And God was true to his people because God said, I will be with you. And he poured out his blessings on Gideon. And so this morning I really believe that we need to stop and say, enough is enough. It, it's just enough. We need to identify the, the idols that are in our lives and ask for God's power in our lives to overcome them. He, he's the only one that can do it. We can't do it. We don't have the power. We don't have the means. We don't have the know-how. 
But God does, and he says, I will be with you if you are willing to take a stand. So with that this morning, will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you again this morning just for a time that we can come together and hear your word and how joyful it is. Father, I pray for all the strongholds that are within our lives. Father, whatever idols that we have created ourselves or others have created around us. Father, I pray this morning that you would bring them to the forefront of our minds. Father, you would give us a burning desire to set those idols aside. Knowing that in our own strength, and our own power, we can't do it. But, but we have a God who can. Baal is not a God. The idols that we have are not gods, but we've created them to be gods. And you are a jealous God. You are the one true God who wants our undivided attention to you. And Father, I pray this morning that we give that to you. Help us instead of saying, why is this happening? To stop and say, Lord, what are you showing me through this? What do you want me to do? What do you want for my life? How can I serve you in a way that truly brings glory and honor to you? And Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you stand this morning as we sing in the garden.
muted for just a moment. And several on, the, on Facebook this morning were saying beautiful music. They're so thankful for that. And beautiful singing. They're so thankful for that. You know, this is one of those things that you can truly appreciate that we haven't been able to appreciate uh, for quite some time. And so uh, I hope you appreciate it as much as they are uh, because they're really uh, excited about hearing you, hearing you, being a part of what's going on. And, and so I know it's way different than what we're used to, but, uh, you know, if, if you look at that song that we just sang in the garden, uh, there's a lot of singulars in there. And it really does come back to us, I and me. Uh, I, I need to be the one that uh, asks the Lord to uh, transform my life. I need to be the one that stays in the garden. I need to be the one that is a part of what he wants me to do. And I need to be the one that asks, not why is this happening, but Lord, what are you trying to show me? And so that's our encouragement for you today. Uh, as you leave, again, I encourage you to kind of leave in the, in the style of like a, a funeral or a wedding. And so the front ones will kind of be released. The Wilcoxes won't move because uh, they will hug you all. And so we're going to not let them do that. <laughs> so you, my wife is like, uh, one of these days. Yeah, one of these days, but not today. Um, and so if you'll just kind of exit through. Again, there's some things there. If you want to pick anything up, uh, the offering plates are there. Uh, I'm so glad uh, we're able to worship with you and for those of you on Facebook this morning, uh, we really do love you, really do miss you. Uh, it, it's great to come together, uh, excited about that. Uh, as, as we just continue to move forward, things will continue on. I, I shared last week, I met with uh, uh, all the churches that were ready to reopen. We met with Franklin County officials last week and they really said uh, we'll be social distancing through the end of the year, maybe even through the first quarter of next year. And so uh, what we're doing is kind of what we're, what we're going to be doing. And so um, uh, we're excited because we get to see you and meet and worship together. And uh, so we just pray that, that you will be uh, diligent in social distancing as well. So you know, don't go out the parking lot and start oh. hugging on everybody. And say, oh, man, it's so good to see you. It is good to see you. And we're really grateful for that. But just kind of uh, just kind of remember those things that should leave this morning. So. Uh, for those on Facebook, it was great to worship you this morning. Uh, they're all excited about you. Uh, I know several of them uh, were all telling you hi, even though you couldn't see it. Um, and that was the great thing about being able to share this on other pages. Uh, we have people from different states. We have people from all across the country that are, are taking part in our services as we worship. So it's great to be able to fellowship with one another and, and just realize that uh, a lot of the states aren't even opening back up yet. Okay, so they have, they're not worshiping. So... Uh, they're excited to be able to just uh, hear and see what, what you get to do uh, because they're not to that point yet. So, uh, so blessings on your week. Uh, I did forget to mention Francis Roller. Continue to pray for her. She's struggling with shingles and, and uh, they're not so much better yet. Um, um, I, I relate to that. I had those one time and, and that's probably the, one of the most unfun things I ever got to live with. And so continue to pray for her as well. So uh, blessings as you leave. I'm going to close in prayer. Uh, be dismissed cordially uh, to your right and to your left, whichever side you're on. If you would do that, that would be great. Uh, it's great to see you all. If you need anything, be sure to contact me or, or Beth throughout the week. We'll get some prayer things going. And uh, we're thankful for having Emily today. Amen. You can give your family. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you again this morning. Uh, but, but it's really about transformation. And, and Father, I pray that you allow the, the words of our hearts, uh, the words of our mouths and uh, that it really be true that we ask for uh, transformation, that we ask for your presence in our lives, that we ask for you to transform us, to ask for you to, to work within us, that we might speak the good news to those we come in contact with. And, and I know that's kind of even debatable now as we have the social distance, but, but we have opportunities. Um, we have phone calls, we have we have, we have uh, Facebook, we have uh, email, we have different ways, uh, cards, we have different ways of, of meeting and greeting with one another. And so we just give you praise for this day. We thank you for each one here. And Father, we do pray safety upon each one. And we pray for uh, a hedge of protection around them uh, to keep them from uh, being able to, to have or be a part of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And Father, we pray for those families who have experienced that, those that have lost loved ones, those that are even experiencing it today. Uh, we know there's several within our county now that are uh, under a, a stay-at-home order because of the, uh, the virus themselves that they have. And so, Father, we, we pray for the days in the future uh, that you will uh, release that and we'll provide a healing for that. 
But Father, we pray for our hearts today that you will help us to understand uh, who we are and what you want us to do. So we give you praise for this day, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, go. We love you. It's great to see you. Um, again, if you're coming back next week, let us know. We'll rearrange to, to meet however our needs are. So thank you.